Hello and welcome to a very special episode of GameSpot of Thrones, GameSpot's show that's all about the wonderful world of Westeros. I'm Lucy. I'm Dave. And a brand new trailer for season six of Game of Thrones dropped yesterday, so we've been over it with a fine toothed comb to basically point out all the stuff that you may have missed on your first, second, or even third watch. And believe me, they've packed so much into this trailer. Let's get started. But before we do, there's going to be spoilers for all five seasons of the show. Maybe potentially season six if we get our predictions right. Uh, and also all of the books so far. So be warned. Okay, but let's let's go through this thing. So here we are at the wall. And this is clearly basically just picking up where we left off at the end of season five. So Jon Snow been killed... Presumably. Traitorous Ollie. Traitorous Ollie. Um, so he's been... The brothers have turned on him. Uh, they're all a bunch of traitors. Uh, we've also seen more of this clip. So if you saw on Conan O'Brien, Liam Cunningham, who plays Davos Seaworth, was on. And he had a special clip. And it is basically how this scene plays out in that you have the members of the Brotherhood... Of the, um, of the Night's Watch against... We have uh, Davos, Ghost... The dead body of uh, Jon Snow. Is he dead? I'm just going to point out the guy in the middle. Because I'm getting real Benjin vibes from him. I don't know how that would happen. What do you think? Well, he, he was mentioned... Well, Ollie said that the way to, to, to get Jon out was to say Benjin. Can you trust anything Ollie says? But maybe... Was it was it a lie? Did is Was he actually on his way? I mean, it's, it's possible. Mm. He was lost north of the wall, but I mean, wow. we've seen people survive out there, so, you know. More on that in a bit, because mm. we've got an amazing character come back who ha was presumed lost beyond the wall. Uh, so, interesting to see how the rest of that scene plays out. I thought he was the man to lead us through. John, I'm going to rewind a little bit. John looks pretty dead. Yeah. And I know everyone's saying, and you know, we've all been on Harrington Hair Watch. We've been hoping that John's been alive. He does look pretty dead there. You can hear in the voiceover. So this is uh, Tom and Giants Bane saying, I thought he was the man to lead us through the long night, but I was wrong. This could be one or two people. So this could be a red herring. This could be, um, it could actually mean John and the prophecy that he is this legendary prince, Azor Ahai Reborn, and he was going to lead them through the long night and protect the men of Westeros against all the Whites and the White Walkers. Could also be Mance Raider. Yeah. Uh, who obviously died in series five. Ironically, at the hand of John. Yeah. Well, sort of. I mean, he, you know, mercy, the mercy killing, if mercy anything. Kill. Dealt the final blow. So that's quite interesting. So there's Tormund, still got the beard. So it looks Thankfully. like the looks here like the wildlings are mobilizing for war, which is a thing to bear in mind. But I was wrong. Here we are, have the pyramids of Marine. Marine where all the Khaleesi admin goes down. But as we can see here, all the high masters are kind of freaking out. Well, they're trying to regain control of the city now that Daenerys has vanished. So the end of season five, Drogon picked her up and just took her out into the grasslands of Essos somewhere. Uh, Tyrion, as you can see, has sort of been left in charge. Um, he's good at that. Yeah. He's been I mean, hand of the he, king. Exactly. I think I think if anyone was going to be left in charge, it would have been Tyrion. Um, so you can hear the voiceover. Uh, Do you like games, little man? And it sounds like Ramsay. Um, mm, let me... Should we play that again? Let's replay. Whoop. Do you like games, little man? It, that does sound like Ramsay. It does sound a lot like Ramsay. But it could be interesting to see if it's actually Tyrion that he's referring to. Or a young, a young man you would call a young man, um, little man, I guess. Be interesting to see what that comes up with. So here, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious from the next shot who this is, but it's someone grabbing a dagger with their left hand, so it must be Jamie, right? Obviously because of the. Um, spill blood in this holy place. But there is a high sparrow. You would spill blood in this holy place. So, Cersei. Obviously, she's coming right off the back of her humiliation. She's been stripped naked, walked through the streets of King's Landing. So now that Jamie's back, there he is, looking very fine and Probably dapper. Probably wants some payback. She's going to use uh, her brother to sort of exact some revenge upon the faith, even though it was her fault. Yeah, it was, anyway. it was very much her chickens coming home to roost. But I don't <laughs> think I don't think Cersei's one to take that standing. No. So you would spill blood in this holy place, and this is this is quite a nice quote from Jamie. So I'm gonna let it play. The gods won't mind. They spill more blood than the rest of us combined. Oh. Uh, so you know, strong words against the gods there. So this scene here. So this is highly likely to be some kind of red priestess, and we see later on in the trailer there is a new one. Mm. 
So we've got everyone's Mel- got one these days. Melisandre obviously is going to be in it, but this looks like a new red priestess looking into the fire uh, for help. This is Kalsar. That definitely is. So this is the Kalsar that we assume is Cal Jacko. So Jacko, if you're a book reader, I think he's in the show too. So when Drogo gets sick, um, he sort of immediately turns against him. He immediately turns against his Cal and tries to take over. Um, so this is actually his his Kalsar that uh, Daenerys sort of gets dropped off with. Oh, who's that? Drogon. Drogon. He's having fun. This is actually kind of hard to see. HBO releases videos in 720p, so this is a real zoom and enhance thing. This is basically uh, the Weirwood. Uh, so we can see here, this is Bran. and Who we didn't see any of in the last season. Some would say that's a good thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, Bran's storyline gets a bit boring for me at times. So... This is the part in the story where Bran kind of comes into his own. So we know that he can walk. He's walked into Hodor. He's walked into Summer. Um, but this is him going beyond the wall to find, like, the source of all that and, like, follow the three-eyed crow slash raven. They change it for the show. <laughs> uh, in his dreams. Uh, so he's gone beyond the wall to kind of find the source of all his powers. Uh, so Bran... I don't want to spoil too much for the books, but he does go on an interesting journey of self-discovery. And this is kind of the place that it starts. So this is him in the Weirwood. No one. So here you can hear in the voiceover, you got Jack N. Hagar, uh, the assassin from uh, the Faceless Men, saying, who are you? And you can hear Arya saying, no one. And then she gets smacked in the face by who I assume, it's kind of difficult to tell, but I assume that's the Waif. Yeah. So the Waif is in it and still being a bully. Mm. Well, that was a recurring theme from last season that she hadn't kind of earned the title of no one yet. Yeah, which is difficult because everyone's a no one. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, so this is where I think Daenerys is going to end up. So in Dothraki culture, uh, Khaleesi, uh, wives of Khal's, when the Khals die, they are made to go to Vase Dothrak. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, which is kind of the Dothraki. They they only have one city, and it's a sacred city um, because they they're obviously kind of nomadic lifestyle. They mm. they roam around on horses. So this is their one city, and this is where all of the um, the the Khaleesi's go once their husbands have died. So now that Daenerys has kind of been picked up by the Dothraki, it's likely that she's put there, and you can see her being stripped by. They're kind of meant to be like holy women. Hmm. Uh, they're called the Dosh Kaleen. Girl has been given a second chance. So Jack in here saying a girl has been given a second chance. So if we assume that Arya killing Samarin Trant when she wasn't supposed to was her first chance. Yeah, what would what? be? She, so she, she must this, do this something is, else then. So this is her second chance. At a, this is her second chance at, a, at life, I guess, because she's been made blind by the faceless man. So this is her second chance. She can't mess it up. There will Look not at her go. Third. So there's Jack in saying there will not be a third. So you can see here by this still, she is still blind. Yeah. Um, so she hasn't regained her sight uh, yet. Yet. But she still could. I guess if it's done by magic then. Well, she could just be there daredevil. Be a third. That's true. Sansa! God, she looks like she's just sick of everything at this point. She has been through so much. Mm. But what's interesting to note is on her chest, the Stark sigil. So it's interesting to see that she's kind of taken back the name Sansa Stark. And this is actually interesting. We will This plays in a little bit later. All I think about. All I think about. She says, um, it's all I think about what was taken from me. So you get to see kind of like, you know how Arya has the list of people that she wants to kill? This next bit of the trailer kind of runs like the people that Sansa wants to kill. So Ramsay, I think this is quite interesting. I saw someone on the subreddit picked on this. He's cleaning a blade with a cloth. So he's not, he's not sharpening a blade. He's cleaning it. So who has he just killed? I haven't seen his dad and he isn't in this whole trailer. That's 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 true. I mean, although he is a murderous bastard, he could have killed any number of people. 
But Ramsay is a bastard no longer because Roos legitimized him. So if he making killed him, him the sole heir. Which I'm just saying. So this is Sansa's hit list, obviously starting with Ramsay. <sighs> obviously not herself. Walder Frey. But that, that would be a big one. So Walder Frey, obviously, you know, sort of spearheaded the Red Wedding. Yeah. Um they took bread and salt. Didn't matter to Walder, he had them all killed. So he had a brother, Rob, his wife, and her mother killed. Uh, but what's interesting to note here is these guys in the hall are all wearing Lannister armor. So why are the Lannisters and the Freys teaming up again? Why is everyone there? Well, the Frey seems to be on everyone's and no one's team, so he's just in it for himself, really. Because no one is on his team. <laughs> Sorry, that was Lord of the Rings. Let's not mix up the fantasy epics. And then finally, Littlefinger, my love, Littlefinger. But you've got to admit, he has tried to pass himself off as Sansa's best friend and has really been the opposite. So I think he I can't might. imagine great things are going to happen to him this mm. season. I've actually written in my notes, all caps, Littlefinger looking badass. <laughs> I know what happens. Sir Jorah. Poor Sir Jorah. I know what happens. What's interesting here, you can kind of see him like covering it up, but he does look increasingly worried. It looks bad. He's got the grayscale infection, which is usually fatal, uh, unless you're the case of Shireen Baratheon, who manages to survive. Yep. So if he manages to survive, he could turn into a stone man, maybe, but it's high. I don't know. I'm not a particular fan of Sajora. I think he's cool. I like him. I, I hope he's okay. He'll be fine. Poor Sajora. Poor Sajora. Look. So when I first saw this trailer, I thought this was Reek. That's it's actually Sir Loras. Oh. Look at him, because you can tell in the next scene, no here's course. Marjorie giving him a hug. Uh, so that kind of goes to show that even though Cersei managed to lie and wheedle and get her way out of prison, admittedly a great embarrassment yeah. and cost, the Tyrells haven't managed to do that just yet. Where's Olena? Where is... Um, Where's the grandmother? Scheming, Scheming hopefully. Somewhere. I think she, I, I kind of feel like that character is one of the few characters that can actually stand up against Cersei. So she can stand up against anybody. She's a badass lady. Um, but she needs to go rescue her grandchildren pretty, pretty quickly. We have to fight. So, so Davos, we have to fight. What does he have in the background there? Zoom in hand. That is. That is a Stark banner. That definitely is a Stark banner. So this suggests that Davos manages to get the Starks on side. And as we can see, we've seen Santa already proudly brandishing her Stark wear. It uh, looks like they're in the same place, like snowy trees right. and cold. Probably winter. Probably just off to the left of Davos is, is all Sansa. Maybe she's cut off underneath the horse. <laughs> Fight. Here we are. We're actually at Winterfell. So you can yep. see the burning crosses, which means that... Uh, the Bolton army's there, but those structures off to the right, that means you're in Winterfell. Varys looking a bit worried. Who's this lady? Who's this? So we know from like the Game of Thrones casting that she is another red priestess. She kind of looks like she's delivered some bad news and that she's really happy about it. She's like seeing all this stuff go down. She's like, mm hmm. Just FYI, here's, uh, here's the worst thing that you could have ever wanted. BRB, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can see I wander away from. So Tyrion and Varys are managing... Uh, they're like the best buddy cop movie <laughs> I've ever seen. That was probably one of my highlights from season five was when they were traveling across the Narrow Sea, which is great. So it's interesting to see that they've been sort of left in charge um, and that the the Lord of Light and his followers are just determined to He's mess He's getting up. everywhere these days, isn't he? The old Lord of Light. He's got people everywhere. He's doing all right for himself. <laughs> so here... Here is Pike. Let me rewind. You can't really tell. Again, 720p. Some, some real CSI zoom in enhanced Come stuff on, going zoom in enhanced. This is Pike. This is the seat of the uh, the Grey Joys of the Ironborn. This guy here. Let me just do this. Euron Greyjoy. So he plays a big role in the books. I don't really want to spoil his story too much. He's not a particularly nice guy. Uh, and as we've seen from the casting, so in, in the books he has like one eye and he's kind of more piratey. He captains a ship called the Silence where all of the people who man the ship have had their tongues cut out. He's not the nice guy, goes around raping and mar really? a, marauding. A, a, a Greyjoy that isn't nice? I'd have never thought of that. Hey, Yara's 
fine. Fine. Yara slash Asher. We'll come to that. Um, but I, I do have interesting stories about why he's important and why the resurgence of Yara is important. Oh, oh, Here we've got Jamie running through like Lannister tents. You can see the guy behind him brandishing the Lannister colours. Yeah. Some kind of fight is going on. That's like a huge battalion camp of so, all the army. We do know from the fourth book, um, instead of actually going to Dawn, he comes here instead. So he's meant to be at the Riverlands here um, because the river lords kind of aren't bending the knee as much as they should to the throne. So Jamie's sent up to sort of bring them all into line. Um, and actually one of the people that he fights against is Catelyn's uncle, uh, Brynden. Uh, but more on that later. You belong. We got some fight scenes, and I think this, these are the most exciting for me, and I'm gonna go through slowly. So you can kind of see here, this guy on the left has a stark shield. This guy on the right, once we get there, that is a Targaryen crest, my friends. This is a flashback scene, most likely from the Tower of Joy. <laughs> you will not shut up about the Tower of Joy. I, I also won't shut up about Clegane Bowl, and I'll tell you for why in a minute. Tower of Joy uh, was a book sequence. I think it came in like a flashback from Ned when he was like drunk on Milk of the Poppy or something. Basically, Ned's sister, Lyanna, either absconded with or got kidnapped by Rhaegar Targaryen, who's uh, Daenerys and Viserys' dad. And there was a, you know, there was the whole um, Robert's Rebellion, the Battle of the North, all that happened. And after that all died down, after the sack of King's Landing, uh, Ned and a bunch of guys from the North, a bunch of his friends went down to try and rescue Lyanna. And she was at a place called the Tower of Joy. This guy on the right is probably Sir Arthur Dane, a member of the King Guard. Um, who there's a big there's a big fight I won't spoil it but it's kind of like this might be where we find out who Jon Snow's mother is there's uh, there's a big fan theory if you watch last week uh next week's episode actually by the time this goes out I dig into this fan theory more um but if this is a flashback scene where we finally get to see the Tower of Joy that is do you notice as well that he is wearing the exact same helmet as the King's King's Guard as well. Mm -hmm. So I think you're pretty spot on there. I hope so. But also Sir Arthur Dane, um, he fights that big battle with two swords. So it's likely that he might just take the sword from this guy who he kills. Yeah. This guy's probably one of, like is one of Ned's friends. He goes with like six buddies um, to try and rescue his sister. And I think he's the only one who returns. Rip. Which is kind of sad for Ned. So here's Tommen looking all grown up. Cersei, you can note here, is wearing, Mar uh, not Marjorie, uh, Myrcella's necklace. So she died. She's only got one child left. Um, but Cersei's obviously taking this to heart yeah. and is going to use it to fuel some more revenge. As if she needed more fuel for that fire. As if she needed any more. But I do like her hair. Mm. She's rocking. She's made, uh, she made the most of that forced haircut that she had. She's rocking the pixie. The Lannisters are... Show them what the Lannisters are. So I, she has got so much like just revenge, just ready to go. Uh, I'm really excited to see what she does. She's gonna kick the hornet's nest. <laughs> so here, I can't really tell. It looks like the High Sparrow praying uh, and someone's kind of just creeping up on it. I actually think this is a bit of a uh, red herring again. I think this is, what happens before. So I think this is Jamie coming up to talk to him. And that's when they have that confrontation from yeah. earlier in the trailer. I mean, it, it does look that the High Sparrow is wearing the same robes. And he's got two two of his underlings guarding him. So Yeah. Uh, Cersei, what is she saying? What do we do to our enemies? What do we do to our enemies? And then they've got this amazing cutaway shot of someone stabbing someone in the back. I don't think the High Sparrow would go down that easily. I think that's someone else. Yeah. It actually, I mean, from the look of it, it looks like a King's Guard helmet. But I don't think it is. That might be a stretch, but you know. Maybe. I'm open to ideas. I'm open to interpretation. Well, hey, that's a King's Guard helmet. That's a King's Guard helmet. That a, a is a large one at anything. That's Sir Robert Strong. Uh, and basically, this trailer is setting up the fact that Clegane Bowl is going to happen. Clegane Bowl is where. Um, the mountain has been resurrected by Kyburn the Meister to fight on behalf of Cersei. The Hound didn't die, despite dying off camera. Uh, he didn't die either, and he's going to represent the Faith in a big battle for the fate of Cersei Lannister. So he's been brought back, and he's been referred to as Sir Robert Strong. 
He's actually the strongest man in the world, the guy who plays the mountain. Yeah. So mm. that's... An impressive dude. He is impressive. So, click game ball. Do you think that'll be, like, season six's giant moment? Like, Yeah. Oh, I hope so. I think on par with the... Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. All right. Here we've got Yara Greyjoy and Unnamed Other. Don't know who that is. He's not wearing an eye patch. Uh, no, that could be another Grey... That's likely to be another Greyjoy, but it's likely that she's gone back to Pike. There is a whole thing in the book where she tries to become the new head of the Ironborn, like, like family. She tries to become, like, a queen. Um, but sadly, they, they don't go for that. Here we've got... Well, first of all, let's just pay real close attention to Mace Tyrell, uh, who's wearing the floaty, feathery... I love it. So we've got the Tyrells here and Lannister troops. Um... Obviously, preparing for those troops look awesome. Adam. Yeah. Uh oh, and turns out they're against the faith. So I think that's going to be one of the big recurring themes: is that Cersei's determined to get revenge and basically take control back from the faith, and she's going to use Jaime and his position in which to do it. If it's the Tyrells going up against them, then I guess they want the Tyrells. Co. Yeah, that that'll be the only reason. That's pretty good. Like, they'll be the only reason the Tyrells are going for it is because they've got Marjorie and Loras uh, locked up tight. The needle war is between the living and the dead. This is quite good. They actually show quite a lot of the uh, the knight, uh, the knight's king. This is a really interesting point to notice because Davos, so I mentioned earlier, Davos and Sansa teaming up. So you can see Davos here is at House Mormont. So like Jorah Mormont. Hmm. Um, but the thing is, we actually find out in, I think, series four or five, that the Mormons are only um, are Bannerman to the Starks. And Lyanna Mormont, who's like this 10-year-old girl who is in charge of the whole house because, uh, you know, everyone keeps either dying or being involved in the slave trade. So she's in charge of the house. And when Stannis writes to them to ask for the, his support, she sends them a note saying... Um, Bear Island knows no king, but the king in the north, whose name is Stark. So if Davos and Sansa team up, and that's how they get the Mormons on side to fight for them, that all ties together neatly. That's very, that's very neat. Neatly with a bow. So also Sansa and Davos, which is like dream team. <laughs> I'm getting so excited about this series. Someone getting, I've literally just written in my nose, someone getting bitch slapped. We don't know who this is. Um, but you can see the Night's King doesn't seem afraid of fire. No, which is worrying because that was originally like the only thing that would work against them. So doesn't seem afraid of fire and the obsidian dagger uh, dragon glass didn't work either. Not looking so good nope. for the humans. So here we have uh, someone going across the sea. So I don't know, I did see on Reddit, someone said that like this could be Sam being seasick. I actually think this is Sam finding out about the mutiny. Um, which is quite sad. And you can see Gilly comforting him. But Sam's on his way to Old Town to train to become a maester. He's probably going to blame himself because he wasn't there to protect John. It's his own fault. He should not never have gone. Here, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Not because... <laughs> I don't know. No, so here we get to see Yara Greyjoy. And we know that she's in Volantis. So this, this lady, this lovely lady that she's making out with, has a uh, tattoo on her cheek. That is the sign of a whore in Volantis. They are made to get that tattoo. So when Euron becomes king, he wants, Euron Yor becomes king. Well, head of the Ironborn, basically. He kind of wants, he wants Daenerys' dragons. So he sort of sends people out there. So this kind of suggests that in the show, at least they've sent Yara or she goes by herself to try and find Daenerys and gets sidetracked along the way. <laughs> I mean, who? who like? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm. This guy actually caused me quite a lot of trouble to figure out who he was. Really? Yeah, because it's actually not that obvious. He's just an old guy, but he's actually uh, the three eyed crow. So he is the guy that Bran keeps seeing in all of his dreams. Um, he's actually a legitimized bastard, a, tar a, leg a legitimized Targaryen bastard, son of Egon the Fourth. So, like, a long time ago, he's actually very, very old. Um, he becomes the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and then one day he goes out ranging beyond the wall and gets lost, and he's presumed dead. A lot of people get lost up there. It's pretty dangerous. His names are like Brynden Rivers before he got legitimized, or he's also known as Blood Raven. 
He's meant to have a big port wine uh, stain on his cheek, like a birthmark. Well, you never know. It could be hiding. It could be hiding. It's, it's meant to be quite big, and it's meant to look like a raven. That's where his name, Blood Raven. Ah. Sorry. But he is actually the guy who ends up teaching Bran about um, about his gifts, about, about how to walk. skin changing and green seeing, which is ah. um, being able to sort of use nature to see, like look into the past and Bran all the kinds. Druid. Yeah, basically Bran's a druid. Tormund Giant's Bane. What a freeze a frame of him. But this, who's, right, so you see that flag <laughs> is um, House Hornwood, who are the bannermen of the Starks. So obviously Davos gets the wildlings together with the Starks in that battle. But then that guy. It's a very blurry guy. It's a blurry guy. Out. I'm just, I can't just point at every single man and say, He's likely to be a character who we thought was dead, but it could be. Looks a bit Stannis esque. The he's, hype he's, will never die. He's a, guy, he's a guy with short hair. I miss Stannis. In, uh, flying a different banner. Shush. Uh, so, this is obviously some battle. Sansa looking. She looks a bit worried there. That's a, that's a shot of her we're kind of used to seeing, though. Yeah. So, here we've got um, Arya fighting against the Waif. God, Arya's turned into a badass. Oh, she's such a badass. Look at that flip. Flip. Boom. Here we have uh, another ba uh, like battle going on. We've got Bolton banners uh, this time around. So we've got the flayed man. So this is obviously one side of the, the siege. Uh, and we know who's on the other. Boom, there he is. I love him. But where's his dad, like you said? Where is his dad? No, Roos hasn't been around. Where are you at, Roos? The thing is, uh, someone noticed on the internet, as always is the way, there is an umber flag uh, flying here. Really? House Umber. Uh, so House Umber actually, you know when Bran and Rickon escaped? Hmm. That's where they went. Well, that's where Rickon went. Ah. Rickon was was taken there by the wildling lady, Asha. Is that it? They changed the names around from the book to the TV show. Yeah, I think we know who you yeah. mean. Um, so he, she was actually told to take him to House Umber. Wow, so is he going to be back then as well? What are they doing? Battles. So, oh, quickly gone past it. Cersei and probably Jamie. It looks like Jamie's hair and build, I guess. Wow. I mean, She's it, a busy lady. She does have a certain affection for her brother. For her brother. And oh. as well, like if, oh. if if he had actually, you know, gotten um, like done everything that she wanted, she is likely to repay Reward that with him. Yes, hmm. that's that's how she likes to say thank you. I think. <laughs> Uh, here we've got the Sons of the Harpy being more of a nuisance, so it looks like they're killing more masters, just being. being well, could jerks. this could this also be um, a flashback to see what happened to um, the re the rest of Daenerys's crew after she was taken away by Drogon? Yeah, that could be a. This is where we left off in Marine. Mm. That's a good point. Oh, there's Reek. There's Reek. Looks like he's being comforted, probably by Yara, uh, his sister. Uh, there is, uh, I imagine they'll meet again. They do yeah. meet again, actually, in the books, so. Right, Pod and Brienne. So you know how I was all excited about Clegane Bowl? I'm gonna talk about it some more. <laughs> so in A Feast for Crows, um, Brienne and Pod make their way to the Riverlands to see the Tullys. You can see it's the Tullys because the the banner in the background. And Brienne is on her mission to try and find Sansa. Uh, and when she's there, she uh, ends up finding her way to the Quiet Isle, which is like a, where all this mon this monastery is, and she meets a man named the Elder Brother. We already know that Ian McShane is basically going to be the Elder Brother because he kind of leaked that himself, like just paid no attention to his NDA. And there she sees a man who could resemble the Hound. So highly likely the Hound's alive. Highly likely the mountains alive. Highly likely Clegane Bowl is going to happen. Highly likely Clegane Bowl is going to happen. But that's that's their story arc for season six. So here we have the mountain just like totally ripping the face off a member of the faith. With his own chains as well. So clearly Cersei's got him just doing her dirty work for him. Drogon. Drogon again. Drogon. What's up, man? Dragons do not do well in captivity. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink, and I know things. Best line of the trailer. Best line. So we know that Daenerys is obviously out of the picture, at least for the moment, because Tyrion's drinking again. Um, and it, I just sort of love that she's got this small council 
who's just been left to pick up the pieces of a place that don't want her or her friends of in. utter ragtags as well utter They've all been kicked out of their own homes um also one of them like is just a translator <laughs> she's like I'm leaving a city now that's quite the promotion so but i will talk more about this this kind of role that Tyrion's found himself in because it looks like they've sort of blended him with another character from the book that they've already said that they're not putting in. Battle scene. We've got some banners. It's a lot of banners. <sighs> Potentially Mormont, um Shields of uh, Bolton. Yeah, Flayed Man on the Shields. Flayed Man on the Shields. So it, this is this big... The Battle of the Bastards, I think, is how someone referred to it online, which I quite like. Yeah. Wildlings. Who's kidnapping Pod? Hang on, let's let's rewind this. That didn't look like no heart. We can You can kind of see his neck. Uh everyone is kind of saying this could be Bron because of the gloves. Bron wears those gloves. Yes, that's very true. He does wear the like the fingerless fingerless numbers. People wear gloves. It's cold. I don't know. It could be Bron. It could be. One one. This is likely to be the giant. One one. Giants are great. They're probably my favourite things in game of The few that are left. But no, they're, they're so great. Here is Mira. Uh, so she was the lady who was traveling with Bran and her brother, who's another green seer, whose name escapes me right now. But he was played by the guy from Love Actually, the little kid from Love Actually. That's his name now. That's his name. But no, so we got Mira. Um, she looks kind of worried. I can't tell if she's like climbing up from something. Looks like something's above her, kind of about to yeah. do bad things. Yeah. Who, the thing is, you don't see who this is. I'm inclined to think this is Arya because if she's blind, she'll need to kind of find her way around. Yes, that's quite absurd. It actually. does look like a like a lady's hand. Yeah. Um, I'm inclined to think it's Arya. <laughs> Title, but don't worry. But wait, there's more. Gonna stop it there. Oh damn! So you think he's, you think Tyrion's gonna die? Tyrion's not gonna die. No, of course not. Tyrion can't die. Uh, I People mean, riot. George R. R. Martin said that Tyrion's gonna be the one to basically last until the end. So he's never gonna be in any peril. But what's quite interesting is in the book there's a character called Quentin Martell, who is the son of Prince Doran of Doran Martell, off of Dawn, um, and he's sent all the way across the Narrow Sea to find Daenerys Targaryen to bring her to dawn quentin sadly doesn't he, this i mean this is actually quite you know what happens he thinks that because he's got a little bit of Targaryen blood in him that he can just ride a dragon all the way back across to westeros um that does not happen no poor poor naive little man but it's interesting to see what they've done with this shot um because you can s kind of see his silhouette in the flame yeah but i think i think it'll be fine no yeah uh, Tyrion will live forever. Tyrion will live. And then... April 24th, 9pm on HBO. Or stream it on HBO now, but we're in England. We can't do that. All right, so that's everything that you may have missed from the Game of Thrones Season 6 trailer number two. They fit so much They in. snuck in a lot. Like, I watched it two or three times, and until I'd sat next to you watching you pick apart every frame... It's quite amazing how much they snuck in there. I'm so excited. I mean, I, I also kind of like it because they've given out quite a clear roadmap for how Six is going to go, mm. um, which as a book reader is quite comforting um, because obviously they've deviated so much. But we'll find out more, obviously, when the season premieres on April 24th. For more on Game of Thrones, make sure you tune in to Game Spot of Thrones. All men must subscribe. Uh, so make sure to follow us, Dave. I'm at a regular Dave. I'm at Lucy James Games. And we'll see you next time.